Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to my channel. Here's how I make future bass. Kind of like Mirko. First, set the BPM to 114. Using a Rhodes keyboard, play these chords. Make it strum by adding arpeggiator and note length using these settings. Feel free to pause, champ. Because if there's one thing that FL does do better than Ableton, it's right-clicking a chord stack to make it strum, whereas I gotta fiddle around with all these settings. And Ableton, please fix! Oh wait, huh. I can just save this as a rack and use it anytime. Ableton still better? <laughs> Finally, make the EQ look like this. Using the root notes of the chords, create a bass line. You can see how to make this in my sound design video that you'll watch after this one. Add a guitar ambience in the key of the song. Make it spacey by drowning it in hybrid reverb. I use the textures and tape low speed setting. Ask your mom to drive you to Warp Tour so you can find a band to sample a sad guitar riff. Kind of like this. Add flanger and reverb to make it spacey as well. Finally, a glockenspiel because take a shot every time I use a glockenspiel in a video. It sounds good as a layer, okay? Plus this will probs make its way into the drop somehow. Look, you don't even need to do anything with it. Altogether, it sounds like this. Make a drum rack for your intro drums. Layer a djemba, a snap, and a snare transient, and run it all through a glue compressor and call it Vibe. Place it on the three. Next, find a deep kick, the kind you can feel in your chest. Perfect. Place the kick so it kind of foreshadows where the drop is gonna be. It's especially nice with syncopated runs at the end of the bar, kind of like this. Add a constant hi-hat loop to keep all the syncopation that you just added in check. Add a transient shaper to make the hats pop more. Layering hats that stay on the 8th and 16th lets you make your kicks as crazy as you want without losing danceability. Bring the roads up an octave for that variation. Copy the chords to another channel and make it a pad by changing the envelope. Now you have two options here, vocal or no vocal. If you're gonna use a vocal, make sure the beat isn't too busy so that you or whoever you decide to hire can come up with ideas over what you just wrote. <laughs> what do you mean, whoever I can hire? I can't sing or find a vocalist. Uh, all the loops on Splice, they suck. Okay then, don't use a vocal. But make sure you fill that space with something interesting. But nothing fits here. <laughs> Jeez, Ash, you don't get it. I hustle, I grind, I'm on that I Gary V mind. I mean, you could always use a vocal chop or like try a simple phrase. Look into weird instruments like theremins. I mean, San Holo literally has a song where he uses only one phrase over and over. You know, if you spent as much time experimenting as you did complaining, then you'd probably have an actual song done by now. So you may be wondering, what did I do with this track? Easy. I panicked because I can't find a vocal to fit this progression, so I just said, screw it, Valorant time. I can't do this anymore. If only I was subscribed to an amazing, helpful, and inspirational YouTube channel. Like, altogether, it sounds like. After losing six straight games in Valorant, the sadness is real and you're ready to continue working on the song. Delete the strummy synth and bring the Glock back in. Add in a fast snare like this. 
Now, this may look complex and time consuming to make, but if you're lazy like me, just search build up loops on Splice and drag it in. Because the sooner we can get this done, the sooner we can work on the drop. And we all know what you're actually in this video for. Don't forget a riser and a reverse. If you did it right, it should sound like this. Make a new drum rack so that you can have a super intense sidechain for the drop if you're like me and use programs like Duck. Bring in a huge kick and layer it with a transient so that it pops. Replace vibe with a thick clap snare. In the pattern, use a lot of fast kick to snares and kick to kicks for that swag. Use the same hat loop from earlier, but louder. Because if you ain't redlining, you ain't headlining. Put rides on the quarter note. And white noise. And impact to fill out the drop. Don't forget the reverse right before the second snare. Finally, set up the side chain for your drop synths. These are the settings I use. All together, it should sound like this. Bring in the exact same chords used for the intro into a new channel for some epic super saws. Add an arpeggiator and set it to chord trigger mode. Set the rate to 1 8 and gate to 93. Using the technique I showed you in the melodic dubstep video that you'll also watch after this one, set up the double panned super saw left and right. On the saw channel, use smooth operator to clear out any rogue frequencies. EQ out all of the lows. Add hybrid reverb on the default setting because honestly, that shit slaps. And finally, OTT with time at 56 to let everything bleed into one another. Yo, bro, that's so sick. Literally, dude, this is my next song, man. Everybody's gonna love it. I'm not done yet. Oh, man, I just play it through the whole drop. Hell yeah. Posting this on Audius and SoundCloud now. <laughs> Crypto, bro. If you've watched my videos or joined my streams, you'd know that Super Saws by themselves don't really work as a lead anymore, unless you're living in like 2014. Just like you know that DistroKid is the best place to release your music. What's DistroKid, you ask? It's the service that you use to put music into online stores and streaming services like iTunes, Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, TikTok, and more, AKA where everyone is. The coolest thing though, is that DistroKid collects earnings and payments and you get 100% of the revenue minus bank fees and applicable taxes of course but these past couple years have been tough on artists and venues the whole music industry honestly so from now until December 31st DistroKid is a tool called artists for change which allows you to easily donate a portion of your earnings to a charitable organization or cause using DistroKid's split feature all you have to do is choose a charity including some that I personally believe in and designate how much of a percentage from each single you want to donate. And as a viewer of my videos, you get 7% off your first year of DistroKid if you sign up using my VIP link. So go do some good with your music. And thank you so much for sponsoring the video, DistroKid. Dude, your tutorial freaking sucks. I followed everything. You skipped hella stuff. Nobody's even listening to my, to, to all the music that I put out. No, you left halfway through after you heard Super Saws and if you just just watch till the end, you'd know that you have to. Copy the bass line from the intro, but chop up all the notes so that they're playing on the eighth note. In Serum, using the initial preset, open up the waveform editor, right click in this area, anywhere here, and click randomize all. This defaces the saw wave and lets the bass stay chunky without taking up too much low end. Add a little bit of noise and distortion on diode one. Drive all the way up, mix all the way up. It's about drive. Add OTT and utility. Set utility to mid side mode by right clicking and turn it all the way to the left to keep the bass centered. Add another OTT, but only at 62% and pump up that volume a little. Finally, use an EQ to cut out all the extreme highs and lows. You want it to sound chunky, but muffled. Duplicate this channel and delete the effects using the same serum patch 
open up the waveform and randomize it once again. Solo the chunky bass along with your new one and add an EQ. EQ them both together so that this bass adds a buzz to the chunk. Add saturator and corpus on the kick tight preset to give it some more tonality. Use OTT to bring out the corpus. Copy all the notes to your sub. Make sure everything is side-chained. You should be able to hear the kick in full before the basses ever come in. Using the same Kara sample pack that everyone on Splice uses, make a catchy vocal chop. For this one, I pitched it up seven semitones and set it to Complex Pro to give it that tonality. Add additional formants and texture by doing OTT and little alter boy using the formant, drive, and mix knobs and a little reverb. Mid side EQ to keep it wide. Smooth operator to clean up the mix. Bro, none of this even does anything. I can't hear it. Actually, it's very subtle. No, show me the secret sauce, man. I know you're keeping it from us just so people sub to your Patreon. This is the secret sauce, you donkey. It's subtle changes, but these all add up, especially when in context with all the layers that we've added. To keep the vocal from becoming boring to your listener, add a bit of variation by setting the warp mode to texture by experimenting with grain and flux. This works especially well for fills. <laughs> Next, freeze this entire channel and create a new MIDI and audio track. Drag your brand new frozen chop while holding control to duplicate onto the audio track. Right click and consolidate. This gives you one big frozen flattened audio track without losing all the work that you've done on the top. Making sure you have some kind of VST on the MIDI track like Serum or any other instrument. Drag the big frozen vocal chop onto the MIDI track and select melody. This will convert the audio into an entire MIDI clip. Now you can delete this audio track. Go in and painstakingly fix every MIDI note so that it matches with the melody of the original vocal chop. This at least gives you a starter point, okay? Please, if anybody knows a better way to do this, comment below. Turn the serum into another deface saw and add the combs filter. Using wombo combo and EQ, Layer it with the vocal until it sounds good. Now you have a subtle synthy vocal chop layer. Take one chop of the vocal, put it onto a channel drown in reverb and do the same freeze and flatten so that you have a nice long vocal drone. Run it through a bass amp and overdrive and EQ. Make an ambient arp using the notes from the glockenspiel in the intro and drown that in reverb. Don't forget the extremely cinematic fills. Finally, go back to how you don't have a vocal. Kind of give up and just use a splice pack anyway. All together, it should sound like this. No way. Over splice vocals. You're gonna, you're gonna, you, you put Trippy Red, the best singer of Trippy Red, as the vocal because this is just a YouTube tutorial, okay? Or actually step out of your comfort zone. Join a community full of producers and other like-minded people in my Discord. You can exchange ideas and get better together. Speaking of being together, the best way to do that is to like, share, subscribe, and comment on this video. But only if you learned something today. Huge shout out to the VIPs on Patreon. Y'all are the reason I can keep making these videos. Plus, when you find that vocalist, here's a video on how to process it once it's recorded. Thank you so much for watching. Now go make some bangers. And a result! This <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> <laughs>